This week we're celebrating the world's top countries for wine lovers to visit. We're cozying up to clever chefs and their glammed up comfort food and showcasing one fast food giant's brilliant foray into the world of the gourmet degustation. We're also making homemade pasta into an absolute art form, discovering a new range of spirits designed to sit totally outside of regular spirit categories and flavours. And we're cheering chefs worldwide as they unite for the Ukraine to build resilient food systems with locally led solutions. Have you been watching the phenomenal work that World Central Kitchen is doing with their hashtag Chefs for Ukraine? You can pick up stories from the ground as they distribute millions of chef prepared meals to families across Ukraine, Poland, Romania, Moldova and Hungary. It's the magnificent work of World Central Kitchen, a not-for-profit non-governmental organisation founded by chef Jose Andres and devoted to providing meals in the wake of natural disasters. 6,000 kilos of food was distributed to families outside of Kyiv in just one day. Just in time as curfews were put into place, 600 hot meals on that day alone. Now one of the best elements of this response to communities in crisis is the focus on not just charging in to help, but the building of resilient food systems with locally led solutions. Here you can see Andres with a local beekeeper north of Kyiv who has lost 80% of his hives. World Central Kitchen will help this beekeeper to rebuild. The amazing thing about this man is that even lost in everything, he's been giving all the honey to the local, the restaurants that are feeding hospitals. people, to the hospitals, to shelters. So he lost everything and the only thing he had, which was honey to make a living, he's been giving the honey away. You see the Ukrainian people, they have the biggest heart. And in people like him, this is the way we are gonna be rebuilding Ukraine. You can find out more, get involved or donate and support at wck.org. Now, just in case you didn't know, New Zealand has been named the fifth best country for wine tourism. What you do need to know is that the Wine Lovers Index has been created by Bounce, a company that sells luggage storage in over a thousand cities. <laughs> so, you know, luggage that you might want to store while visiting a winery, perhaps. But some interesting little nuggets in all of this. Perhaps some major tourism bodies a bit closer to home might need to pay attention to the fact that the quality of a country's food and indeed the wine can be a huge deciding factor when planning a vacation and can vary greatly from country to country. Their research analysis factors such as wine consumption and production, number of vineyards and wine tours and the average cost of a bottle of wine to reveal the best locations for wine lovers to visit on vacation. Italy takes the top spot in ranking with approximately 400 varieties of grapes native to the country. Portugal ranks second thanks to having the highest number of wine tours of the country studied as well as being the biggest consumer of wine. In third place is Spain with the highest amount of land for vineyards on the list. France ranked number four, although interestingly France has relatively few wine tours in comparison to the others. And taking the fifth spot for the best country for a wine vacation is New Zealand, offering a whopping 4,062 wine tours. That's the third highest offering on this list, with over 40,000 glorious hectares dedicated to viniculture. And I note that this is despite Australia being ranked fifth in the top wine exporting countries. So I reckon, if you're into wine, you've probably already been to Italy and Portugal and Spain and France. Feels like New Zealand should be next on your list, huh? Speaking of amazing wine regions, food and wine country in the beautiful Hawke's Bay would be a pretty good place to start if you're looking for some pretty special food and wine country. Their 2022 Winter Food and Wine Classic sees over 45 delicious events running throughout the region. The festival runs across the four weekends in June and it is truly an absolute food and wine lover's dream when it comes to brilliant chef and winemaker collaborations, workshops and stunning degustation menus, all with a focus on the magnificent local wine and produce that makes Hawke's Bay such a wonderful playground for people like us. So mark your culinary calendars for a visit this June and make sure you book ahead. Still on the subject of wine, this is an item very close to my heart. How hard has it been to survive for all of these years on social media with no white wine emoji? All of those joyous moments with Sauvignon Blanc, Chardy, Riesling. Okay, I admit I'm not that much into Pinot Gris, but there's also Verdejo, Pinot Blanc, Fumé Blanc, Viognier, Chenin Blanc, Gewürz. Surely they all deserve their own form of emoji love. Oh wait, 
we can't, as there isn't a white wine emoji. Although there has been a red wine emoji since 2010. Apparently, the debate actually centers around color, not wine. The white wine emoji is seen as a color variation, and adding color variation to an emoji is complex, according to the UTC. The Unicode Technical Committee, who, in case you're wondering, are the international team that handle these crucial emoji design decisions. According to Food & Wine USA, back in 2015, the group added skin tone modifiers to allow human emojis to be more diverse. But in theory, allowing for the modification of other emojis could be trickier. Yes, wine might benefit from a red or white option, but then suddenly the colour of every emoji could be brought into question. This argument conveniently ignores the fact that some emojis, hearts for example, already come in multiple colours. Would simply adding a single white wine emoji destroy the entire emoji system as we know it? Apparently so. And apparently, constant requests from white wine lovers around the world have gone unheeded. Now Forbes jumped in and jumped the gun a bit in 2018, announcing success when a Napa-based winery mounted a campaign for a white wine emoji that never actually seemed to eventuate. Anyway, thank you to New Zealand wine growers who have picked up the cause and are now calling for action on the much needed white wine emoji. They've started a position. It will be part of a submission on behalf of the global wine industry to get this elusive emoji onto our digital keyboards. So I say raise a glass of your favourite white and get into it. I'll put the link to the petition below and it closes end of May. Now, I wanted to show you these absolutely beautiful pasta moulds. They're made by woodworker John Welsh of John Francis Designs in Massachusetts, USA. And I was absolutely thrilled to receive these from John. Just have a look at them, they're beautifully made. Look at this, they're just gorgeous. I came across these when we were researching for our Italian issue of Cuisine Magazine. We were working with Emily Puller of Burnt Butter Table on a spectacular handmade pasta feature. And Emily used John's gorgeous moulds for this stunning patterned ravioli in a herb butter with roasted beetroot and pistachios. Interestingly, I did try and find a New Zealand based wood carver that might produce the moulds for us, but came up empty handed. I reckon there could be a market out there for someone clever and closer to home. Meanwhile, you can find John's incredible work at johnfrancisdesigns.com and I'll put the links in the program info below for you. If you're into making pasta at home, you will definitely be wanting a set of these beauties. Now then, if you're liking what you see here, do please subscribe and give us a like or a comment or both. This YouTube stuff is not as easy as it looks. As the editor of Cuisine Magazine and a person that commissions a great number of restaurant profiles in New Zealand, I think it's a good time to ask what the future of the restaurant review might look like. The restaurant industry itself has undergone a period of profound change. So does the art of restaurant reviewing have a future? This article by world-renowned restaurant critic for the New York Times, Pete Wells, is an interesting read. Wells is not completely pessimistic. He suggests that there is an evolving role for the reviewer that takes them back to what they were trained for in the first place, Good journalism. I agree. Although a crowdsourced, user-generated review is an easy get for a restaurant and for the consumer, we all know that much of this content can't be trusted. At Cuisine, we ask our food writers to delve deeper into some of the farm-to-table and sustainability narratives, and not just parrot the marketing hype of the chef or the restaurant. Wells says he thinks it's time for writers and reporters to look beyond the bedtime stories that everybody wants to believe. And I know that good food writing is so much more than that. I'll put the link to the article in the program info below. <laughs> I want to give you a quick look at this book. It kind of flew under the radar being put together before COVID hit the restaurant industry. And it was published last year as the world as we knew it was changing big time. It's called Today's Special, and it's a selection of 20 culinary icons and leading voices in kitchens around the world, including such greats as Daniela Soto Inez, Daniel Bulud, Margot Henderson, Jose Andres, Dominic Kren, and Yoshiro Narisawa all of them choosing five emerging chefs that they feel are paving the future of the industry. It's a who's who of who's next in the global dining world and a wonderful celebration of the creativity of a hundred emerging chefs. Some quite fascinating insights into their skills and techniques and a huge nod to the powerful HOSPO community they've nurtured. I'll put the link to the publisher Fight on Press in the info below. <laughs> Completely new, intriguing and somewhat curious is the new range of spirits by Ed Verner and Hilary Eaton and the team at Boxer in Auckland. 
just look at this beautiful hand painted bottle. Each distillate is unique in concept and flavour and their first baby is their distillation of jalapeno chilies. Likened to a gin, using a rotary evaporator, the spicy chemical element is removed and while you can still very much smell the jalapeno on the nose, the taste gives you that distinct green flavour of the pepper without the burn. This is a premium spirits brand of rotary evaporated distillates designed to sit totally outside of regular spirit categories and flavours. Predictable? No. Unusual? Yes, not going to be for everyone, but an exciting new taste designed to be enjoyed over ice or with simple mixes, or used to bling up an array of classic cocktails. It's currently available at $150 for 700 mils, and I think this is one for the radar of the serious spirit aficionado. I'll put the link for the product info below. The World's 50 Best Restaurants Awards 2022 has announced a return to London for their awards ceremony. The awards will be hosted on Monday 18th of July at the historic old Billingsgate Market in the City of London. And this event will mark the 20th year of the awards. Highlights for the program will include a series of key events such as the Thought Leadership Forum, 50 Best Talks, a chef's feast showcasing the finest produce and cooking from the UK, the much anticipated Meet the Chef's Media Round Table, and of course the awards ceremony and, and unveiling of the prestigious 2022 list itself. This special edition of 50 Best Talks will focus on the art of hospitality under the title Bring the Magic, featuring some of the most inspirational and influential restaurateurs of the contemporary era. For more info, go to theworlds50best.com. Now it's pretty clear that lockdowns and forced isolation periods over the last couple of years have given chefs around the world a reconnection to comfort food and the food at their family table. The outcome has seen a new sort of glammed up comfort appearing on menus around the globe. There was of course Dominic Crenn's avocado on toast at Atelier Crenn in California with its toasted meringue, passion fruit curd, avocado cremo. Chef Aniko's tempura oyster at Astur Mendi in Spain. The bread pancake with buttermilk, ramsin and winter truffle by Chef Rasmus at Geranium in Copenhagen. Claire Smith's rolls filled with braised lamb neck and topped with crispy lamb at Core in London. The return of the mortadella sandwich and next level French fries at Gucci Osteria de Massimo Bottura in Beverly Hills. Jose Salog of Potts Point in Sydney, Australia is serving up this incredible anchovy churro. The corn rib by Garima Arora at Restaurant Ga in Bangkok. Fish and chips by Matt Lambert at the Lodge Bar in New Zealand. Or Josh Nyland at St Peter in Sydney with his barbecue fish butchery sausage with burnt tomato and harissa. Now from glammed up comfort food to a super clever PR and marketing exercise for a major player in the fast food steaks that absolutely nailed its brief. Chef Nelly Robinson from Nell in Sydney has produced some phenomenal work with KFC Australia just recently. Nelly, who is one of Australia's uncrowned kings of the degustation menu, got to play with the Colonel's 11 secret herbs and spices to create this intriguing world first 11 course KFC degustation dinner. It was kind of in huge defiance of the snobs who routinely look down upon the sacred dirty bird. Bloody smart move if you ask me, developed in partnership with Chef Patron and Nelly Robinson. You know, this event had to be a super zinger. A very slick exercise to elevate the old Colonel's fried chicken with zinger katsu, supercharged wings, potato with a gravy candle, and the opportunity to lick the Colonel's face from a plate. The anticipation was high. Over 20,000 fans joined the wait list to nab a seat at that KFC degustation restaurant. It ran for three nights only from the 1st to the 3rd of April. A bit of gourmet fast food for thought, huh? And that's us for this week. Links to all of the info from this program are below for you. Do give me a like and a subscribe if you like what you see because none of this content is sponsored or funded. So your encouragement will give me the energy to be back here with a fresh episode for you in a couple of weeks. Catch you then.